liver the pious, and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to re-establish the principles of religion, I myself appear, millennium after millennium. Bhagavad Gita 4.8 The demons who challenge Krishna, who want to compete with Krishna, who want to appropriate the property of Krishna for their own enjoyment, are all enemies of Krishna, and they should be killed. They are miscreants. So Krishna's killing them is all right, because they are demons, enemies of the Lord and of religion. Then Arjuna's question in Bhagavad Gita 2, 4, and 5 is, All right, you can kill your enemies, that is admitted. But how do you advise me to kill my gurus? Guru Nahatva, I cannot kill my gurus. But if for Krishna's sake there is a need, you have to kill your guru also. For Krishna's sake, if Krishna wants, then you cannot disobey. If Krishna wants you to kill your guru, then you have to do it. That is Krishna consciousness. Of course, Krishna will not ask you to kill a bona fide guru, because guru and Krishna are the same. Guru, Krishna, Kripaya. We get Krishna consciousness through the mercy of guru and Krishna. Real guru is never to be killed, but the phony so-called guru has to be killed or rejected. This so-called pseudo-guru, false guru, should be killed, meaning that he should be given up by the sincere disciple. So in this world there are so many false gurus, so many people teaching different kinds of bogus philosophies that uh, contradict the Vedic philosophy. The Vedic philosophy is called Achintya Bheda Bheda Tattva. That means the inconceivable, simultaneous oneness and difference of God and his energy. So God and his energy are two, but yet in another sense they are one, because everything is only God. God, or Brahman, is the original root substance of everything, and yet he uh, becomes the supreme person, and he also emanates so many other uh, living entities, gods, demons, uh, ordinary living entities such as ourselves. Uh, so many worlds, so many different energies come from him. The spiritual world, the material world, uh, Devi Dham, the uh, world of Lord Shiva. All these different worlds and beings come from him. Yet, he remains unchanged and the source of unlimited potencies. So this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And to say that the Supreme Person uh, is not a person at all, but simply some kind of energy or some kind of force, uh, some impersonal entity, and therefore we can do whatever we like with his energy. Uh, this is uh, a criminal. Uh, therefore, people who teach like this, uh, they have misled everyone into sinful life, and therefore they deserve to be killed. And this is the lesson of this part of Bhagavad Gita. Why does Krishna advise Arjuna to kill Bhishma and Drona, even though they're great personalities, even though they have uh, taught him so many things? He advises because they have gone over to the other side. In other words, they accepted a position in Duryodhana's army because Duryodhana had maintained them materially. So this had nothing to do, or their decision had nothing to do with spiritual principles. Their decision was taken on material considerations. Therefore, they have fallen down from the post of Guru. They have taken a position against Krishna, against Krishna's devotee, Arjuna. Therefore, they deserve to be killed or rejected as Guru. So this is the lesson here, that if a Guru or someone who is responsible for imparting spiritual instruction about the Absolute Truth, if they misbehave, if they go over to the other side, the materialist side, the competitors of Krishna who want to exploit Krishna's energy for their own enjoyment, uh, then they're fit to be rejected. And that's the meaning of killed here. Uh, Arjuna, of course, he was a warrior, 
and he had to actually kill them. But in our position, we're not warriors, we're spiritual students, we're nonviolent. So that means we reject anyone who is teaching this false philosophy that we can enjoy the energy of Krishna as much as we like, we can exploit unlimitedly. No, we don't accept that. And anyone who teaches that is bogus. Anyone who teaches the impersonal conception of God is simply drawing other people into a, a black hole from which they can never escape. And what is that black hole? It is called Mayavadi philosophy, that God is impersonal, he has no connection with this world, and that this world is a, a place of appearances only, and therefore we can do whatever we like. Uh, we can steal, rape, murder, kill, uh, do whatever we like, huh? because God doesn't really care. God is off somewhere else doing his own thing. No. No. God has expanded himself within the heart of every living entity as the super soul. And he and the individual soul have an eternal relationship. He is the proprietor of everything because everything has come from him, everything is maintained by him, and everything merges into him at the end. Therefore, Everything that exists is his property and should be used only according to his instructions, not whimsically and not according to our own desire, but according to his desire. This is the real philosophy. A real guru will teach this philosophy. Not that we can indiscriminately kill others or kill animals and enjoy them. Now, that is not correct. We will have to suffer karma for this. And this karma will interfere with our consciousness and our intelligence to the point where we will not be able to become self-realized. After all, self-realized means knowing that one is the spirit soul. And more than knowing, actually experiencing that I am a spirit soul separate from my body and I have an eternal relationship with the Lord uh, in some capacity of service to the Lord. Not that my eternal relationship is that uh, he is the supreme enjoyer and I am also an enjoyer and I can do whatever I like. No, that is enemy of the Lord. That's why Arjuna dresses Krishna as Madhusudana, Arisudana, because he killed people who took that attitude. These are, these are demons. Demon means uh, you are God and I am also God. Now, this is demon. Because anyone who does not accept the supremacy of the Lord, then he becomes sinful. He becomes entangled in illicit sex, intoxication, meat-eating, gambling, so many things. And because of these sinful activities, his intelligence becomes contaminated and he cannot understand spiritual life. He cannot understand this philosophy of achintya bheda bheda tattva. Therefore, Arjuna says, well, Ar Krishna, you killed these demons, but now am I supposed to kill my gurus? And basically, Krishna's reply is, yes, you are, because they're leading you away from the truth, away from self-realization, and away from your perfect body. Hope you've enjoyed this edition of My Perfect Body. This is David Hughes, your host, reminding you to visit us on the web at esotericteaching.org, where you can purchase the complete Esoteric Teaching Introductory Seminar DVD and many CDs of transcendental music and mantras.